Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains. Today's topic is what to do when your final year project isn't going to plan. Well, the final year undergraduate project and its associated dissertation is a very important and very formative part of your undergraduate university education. But unfortunately, sometimes things don't go as you anticipated. You expected that by now you would be able to build X? Well, no, stronger than that. You promised that by the end of the project you would deliver X, but you've had some hiccups along the way and you realize it's not going to happen. Well, what do you do then? You promised, but you won't deliver. Panic. Is your project going to be a failure? Well, it doesn't have to be. Hit that like button because I'm going to show you how you can turn things around. You may learn something useful from the failures and you may even be rewarded by the examiners if you manage to convey that the failure taught you something useful that made you a better computer scientist. Compared to what you've done so far, the final year project is pretty big and it's difficult to predict everything accurately. So, to a first approximation, everyone experiences some hiccups. It's almost never the case that everything works exactly as planned. A resourceful person like you can solve many of these hiccups by just, you know, banging your head against them hard enough for a day or two. But occasionally there's one that takes longer and you get stuck for a week, maybe two weeks, maybe even more. If this happens, well, first of all, talk to your supervisor who's there to help you. Try other ways of approaching the problem. Try talking to someone else who's experienced in that field. Try posting online in a relevant form, perhaps a stack overflow. Try doing something else for a while so that you're not fixated on the thing that doesn't work and you actually give your subconscious mind a chance to keep working on it. And, and maybe when you get back to the unsurmountable problem a few days later with a clear mind, then a solution will pop into your consciousness as if by magic doesn't always happen, but it does sometimes. But anyway, even with all that, sometimes you get to a point where you feel you've tried everything and you still couldn't crack it. So you have to give up and admit that that deliverable won't get done ever, period. And you have to figure out how to cope with that in the context of the whole project. Well, of course, again, first of all, talk with your supervisor. An experienced project supervisor is your best resource here and she may be able to help you rearrange the work so that even if you couldn't deliver this thing X you promised, you are maybe instead delivering this other thing Y which is equally valuable I mean, under some other criteria. But there's another point I want to bring to your attention. Just like your project is one of the most complex things you've done up to that point, and it's really hard to predict everything down to the last detail, so it is going to be with the rest of your professional life, where you'll be responsible for much bigger endeavors than your undergraduate project. And there too, there will be promises made at the start and unforeseen problems that you only find out about later. And the message here is that this will always happen, that this is a fact of life, that things don't always go to plan, and that you have to become resilient against that and that you have to grow the ability to deal with such problems and still deliver something that your client, which as an undergraduate is your examiner, finds still reasonably valuable. Life is basically fractal, I like to say, and a small piece of your life, like the eight to nine months that you spend on your undergraduate project, contains within itself a miniature version of all the rest of your life. So treat your undergraduate project like a, uh, I don't know, like a gymnasium where you train to cope with all the hiccups you will experience during your professional life. They, they will be hiccups of a different type, of course, but the resourcefulness you develop by overcoming adversities can then be recycled when you face adversities uh, of different kinds. Now, this is all very well, uh, you're going to think, but 
Now, my problem is that my project doesn't do what I said it would do, and I'm stuck and I'm in a panic because I have basically failed and I'm going to get a low mark and I won't be able to continue to grad studies and everything is terrible and why am I wasting time on YouTube looking at this video if I'm in this deep doo-doo? Okay, so I get it. <laughs> well, try to abstract away from the issue of the marks and see if there's anything useful you have gained from this experience, albeit in a painful way. For example, you did a computer project that involved not just writing code, but also building a piece of hardware, interfacing with the physical world. And then you discovered that physical artifacts behave differently, that even if you're putting together digital circuits, the world is actually analog. And sometimes all those neat abstractions break down. And the reason something doesn't work as expected is because under those neat zeros and ones, there are actually analog voltages. And that if the circuits don't receive enough power, then those analog voltages are a bit too close to the threshold to be called correctly a zero or a one. And that's sometimes a power supply that reads out as five volt if you stick a meter on it. Uh, if you also attach it to your circuit, then, well, depending on what your circuit is doing at that moment and how much power it's consuming in that phase of your operation, then the power supply may not be supplying its nominal 5 volts anymore. Or maybe it does when you check, but not when you're not looking, and so on and so forth. So, so you learn some useful lessons about how the neat abstractions of the lecture courses actually break down, sometimes in the real world, when the initial assumptions which nobody thinks about anymore, uh, happen to have been violated. And, okay, so you've experienced that. How did you find out what the actual problem was? What led you to identify the root cause? What opened your eyes to what was really happening? Lots of lateral thinking is usually involved here. There's no recipe that works consistently all the time. You have to be creative. But experience helps. And you've started building some of that experience. So write about that in your dissertation. Say that something that looked simple in your original plan was actually really complicated to get going and that you got stuck on it for weeks and that you tried this, you tried that. Show that you were methodical and resourceful and show that you had an approach that eventually led you to identify a totally unanticipated problem. Convey that this humbling experience of eventually failing to deliver the X that you promised has taught you something about things that are not what they seem. Convey that identifying and overcoming that unexpected problem has trained you to look for solutions in unexpected places and that even if you didn't know what you were looking for because the problem was unexpected, you were sufficiently systematic and methodic in your investigation that you did find something and that once you found your hunch you validate it in this way and in that other way and then you solve the problem like that even though you couldn't deliver on the original promise so you don't have to write a diary on an, an epic novel of the greek hero overcoming all adversities and so on you should still write a technical report but in this technical report, between the lines, you should allow the reader, who is your examiner, to appreciate that through having to deal with this setback, you have matured, that you have learned a useful lesson, that you will be better prepared in your professional life when, and it's a when, not an if, when one of your pro projects doesn't go exactly to plan because at some time it will happen. And an examiner appreciates this. The point of the undergraduate project is not for you to build a product that's useful. Well, okay, if that also happens, that's great, more power to you, that's always very nice. But that's not the point. The final product of the undergraduate project is almost irrelevant in importance compared to the process of getting there. Okay, it's, not, it's not the end point, it's, it's the journey. The point of making you do the project is to give you a chance to showcase the computer science and software engineering skills that you picked up during your undergraduate course and to demonstrate that you can apply the theory to solve some actual problem. 
So some of these some of these skills that you acquired are pretty technical, such as you know proficiency in navigating graphs or um, proficiency in analyzing big data, that, that kind of stuff. Okay, but some other skills uh, are more subtle higher level skills and perhaps uh, more widely applicable skills like uh, managing deadlines planning and structuring your work communicating clearly solving unexpected problems recovering from failure and so forth so if you can demonstrate that dealing with the failures of your project has taught you useful lessons in terms of those other skills and that you are now a stronger professional for that then this is something that an intelligent examiner would give you credit for and reward with a good mark. So a failure in the course of the project does not necessarily imply a failure of the project. If you deal with it sensibly and you are able to convey in your write-up that you learned something useful from it, then you can turn that failure into a proof of maturity and ultimately a success. And I wish to point out that learning how to recover from failures should count as a success in your book in its own right regardless of whether the examiner is intelligent enough to give you credit for it when when marking your dissertation learn something from those setbacks because those lessons are valuable not merely because you might get extra marks for showing that and also somewhat recursively learning how to write well learning how to paint in a favorable light and experience that at face value was a failure, that too is in itself a valuable skill which you should cultivate on its own and not just because you hope it would help you collect those extra marks. The marks are of course important, I get it, but they should not be the main objective you're optimizing for. Okay, They, uh, they should not be the reason why you do the course. You should be doing the course to become good at the thing you like. You should be doing the computer science tripos primarily to become a great computer scientist. Getting credit for it is always nice, of course, and you deserve that credit, but in the hierarchy of values, it should come below in importance compared to what you learn and who you become. If you enjoyed this video, please stick a like on it. It really helps. And also, I recommend you watch this other video on how to write a great dissertation. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon in the next video.